Record of Lotos War, Deedlit and Wonder Labyrinth. Name's a bit of a mouthful and sorry if I mispronounced anything, but this is the first time I've come across this series. As far as I know, this game is based off a string of classic fantasy novels from Japan, which apparently started off as a D&D campaign. It also spawned anime, mangas, and other forms of media, but this is my first exposure to it. And with that being said, I'm quite impressed. There's great potential. What we have here is an early access Metroidvania title in the works, being developed by Team Ladybug and Why So Serious. And I believe these are the same people who worked on Toho Luna Nights, which was a great title in my eyes, and I believe the same is going to happen here for Deedlit. But more has to be done, of course. At the moment, the game is pretty light on content. You can probably finish it in like 40 minutes. So yeah, quite short at the moment, but I think an awesome job has been done so far. It seems to hit the notes I look for in a Metroidvania game, or most games for that part. For one, the presentation is great. I got huge Symphony of the Night vibes from it. As much as I enjoyed Bloodstained and ended up liking its 2.5D style, I still would have preferred pixel art, and within this title, it's quite fantastic. Character sprites and environments look incredibly detailed while animations and effects are smooth, fluent, and fun to witness. At first I thought that afterimage effect would be annoying, but it's actually not that noticeable during gameplay, at least for me. And the effects for when you attack and kill enemies is just satisfying. But outside of the visuals, the sound design is great too. Sound effects are classically gamey, punchy, and impactful, while the music is just awesome from what I heard. It just has that sound font that screams nostalgia for me. There's not many tracks at the moment, but I'm liking it so far. And moving on from the presentation, the gameplay is pretty damn good too. You take the role of Deedlit, who wakes up inside a mysterious and unknown location. You have a small portion of a map to venture through, and I was surprised to see a good sense of visual distinction and variety in structure, as well as enemy types. I was mainly surprised because I saw all this in a span of 40 minutes. You'll be fending off goblins, imps, gargoyles, lizard men, and more. And speaking of fighting these enemies, it's pretty well done. If you've played through Symphony of the Night, it's sort of the same ordeal, but it actually feels a bit more mobile and versatile. For one, you can actually attack while backstepping or while moving forward without stopping in place, at least with all the weapons I tried out. You can also attack in multiple directions, whether it be straight ahead, upwards, diagonally, or downwards with any weapon by the looks of it. The weapons also vary by their attack type, speed, and damage. And outside of melee weapons, you also have a bow for ranged attacks, but they're mainly used for these small puzzles. They won't really stump you, but it's a matter of finding the right angle to deflect the arrow to properly progress further. It's pretty cool. You also have magic spells. I've mainly used one in my playthroughs, and it's pretty overpowered. I'll get into that in a bit. But outside of these tools and skills, you also have these things called elemental spirits. And when you have one active, it can give you certain abilities to help you progress through the map, like being able to hover or destroy certain barriers. And it can also affect the damage you do to certain enemies, as well as the type of damage you can resist. You also have something called a spirit level, and this increases as you kill enemies or attack bosses. And as your spirit level rises, you gain more damage as far as I can tell, as well as passive HP regeneration at max level. But once you take damage, you lose the levels along with the passive damage and HP. So the game rewards you for playing well, it's just that playing well isn't that difficult at the moment. Now I'm not someone who thinks a game has to be difficult to be good, but I find this title to be incredibly forgiving right now. Now, I wasn't really expecting the enemies to be difficult, but I was somewhat expecting it for the bosses, and I gotta say they're quite easy from my experience. Conceptually, I think they're really cool. Their themes and design are awesome, but in execution you can easily read and abuse them. And you know how I said that magic spell is really strong? Well, watch this. So yeah, at the moment the bosses are especially easy. Now it could just be because they're the first bosses of the game, but I still think they should be boosted a bit in difficulty, and that magic spell needs to be rebalanced. Maybe try lowering the damage or raising the cost, but other than this, the game is pretty damn good so far. I can't really speak on the map structure and interconnectivity at the moment because it's so early in development, but I'm impressed overall. The visuals are great, the sound design is cool, combat and movement feels good, there's a sense of variety, and the game has some interesting systems. Bosses need a bit of work and a certain spell needs rebalancing, but to conclude, I think this game is shaping up to be something great, despite how short it is at the moment. Although I'd understand waiting out for more content considering the price with its lack of replayability. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Peace.